Uh, let's uh, meantime turn our attention to Afghanistan, getting our first look uh, at the aftermath of this giant bomb that the U.S. military dropped on Afghanistan. You see these pictures, grainy black and white video here. This actually shows the moment of impact as this massive so-called mother of all bombs exploded over ISIS tunnels. We're told this 10-ton smart bomb killed at least 36 ISIS fighters. Also significant that this is the first time the U.S. military has used this powerful weapon on the battlefield. Uh, the commander of the U.S. forces in Afghanistan defending the decision to use this bomb, saying it was the right weapon at the right time. And now questions over how the operation was authorized. President Trump said this. Did you authorize it, sir? Uh, everybody knows exactly what happened. So, and what I do is I authorize my military. We have the greatest military in the world, and they've done a job as usual. So we have given them total authorization, and that's what they're doing. And frankly, that's why they've been so successful lately. If you look at what's happened over the last eight weeks and compare that's what really to what's happened over the last eight years, you'll see there's a tremendous difference, a tremendous difference. So we have incredible leaders in the military, and we have incredible military, and we are very proud of them. And this was another very, very successful mission. This, while sources are telling CNN that it was actually General John Nicholson, commander of U.S. forces in Afghanistan, who signed off on the use of this bomb, but that the White House was informed before the bomb was detonated. A senior administration uh, official telling CNN that, quote, we don't approve every strike, adding that, quote, this administration has moved further away from dictating military strategy from the White House. That is a stark contrast uh, both the president and Defense Secretary uh, General Mattis wanted. With me now, Brigadier General Anthony Tata. He was uh, the deputy commanding general of U.S. forces in Afghanistan and is the author of Besieged. Good to see you, sir, again. And Robert Farley, Great a professor in, in, thank you, a professor and senior lecturer in national security at the University of Kentucky. So, Professor, welcome to you. But, uh, General, me. General, you know, you know, you know Afghanistan. You served in this part of the country. I understand that the General Nicholson, who signed off on the use of this Moab bomb, was actually your subordinate. So, is it unusual to you that the President of the United States would give that much latitude? to the U.S. military to drop this mother of all bombs. Uh, Brooke, uh, great to be with you again. And no, it's not unusual at all. Uh, what, what we're really talking about is commander's intent. This is, uh, you've got a president, a commander in chief, who is unleashing his commanders to make their decisions and find solutions to the problems on the ground, as opposed to what we had in the past, which was a more tightly controlled command climate uh, from President Obama. And so commander's intent is to kill the enemy, kill ISIS. And what you've got here is a known trail between uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. We, this is in the same area that Osama bin Laden escaped, the same general region. Uh, Mick and I operated in this area. He was the brigade commander when I was a deputy commanding general in Afghanistan. And this was his turf. He knows this ground. And if Mick Nicholson says this is the right weapon for the right enemy at the right time, I believe him and I trust him. And I think it's a great thing that President Trump has really unleashed our commanders to make these kinds of decisions. We got Vince Brooks in uh, Afghanistan. We got Mick Nicholson in, Af uh, or in uh, Korea and Mick Nicholson in Afghanistan and, and uh, Sean McFarland in Iraq. You couldn't ask for three better uh, leaders to, to be leading our military right now. And I just think it's great that President Trump has, uh, trusts the military and respects the military enough to, to be making these decisions. Robert, how do you see it? Uh, I see it largely in the same way, that this strike does seem to have been driven by local conditions where the uh, tactical commanders, commanders decided that there was a situation here that could be solved by this particular piece of ordinance. Uh, I do think that uh, some of the commanders do feel more enabled uh, in the environment that Trump has created to undertake these kinds of strikes. Um, so even though we have some indication that uh, there was uh, some allowance for the use of these kinds of weapons previously, we haven't seen this particular kind of bomb dropped. Uh, and it does look like uh, some of the commanders do seem more inclined to use big weapons like this uh, what about, under the new command environment. 
interject since you all are essentially on the same page, you know, and we heard President Trump, you know, when he was asked about this authorization, he said, quote, what I do is I authorize my military. But, but General Tata, back to you, you know, what happens, heaven forbid, you know, something goes awry, that there is collateral damage in some part of the world w with a specific mission that the, that the president himself did not personally uh, authorize. Where does the blame fall there? Well, well, I think, uh, you know, the buck stops with the commander on the ground. The commander makes the call. And, and part of commander's intent is underwriting and trusting that your commanders are going to uh, make the right call, that, that, that they are trained and ready to execute decisions on the ground. And so I really see this, Brooke, as uh, the president is saying he's going to underwrite any mistakes that are made. And, and if there's an egregious error for, through negligence or something like that, then of course that's a whole different thing. But, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, what Mick did here was a very calculated, just a very uh, unpopulated area. And it's a known rat line. We got Pakistan involved now with, uh, you know, helping ISIS get into Afghanistan. So that we've got to deal with that flank. And this is a weapon that can really uh, destroy a lot of uh, people and material. And, and, you know, there are a lot of people that say, well, it's just 36 people that were killed. Well, that's 36 that aren't planting IEDs, that are not going to be fighting and killing Green Berets like we had killed the other day. And, and so, and we don't really know the true number. If it's at least 36, that's not a bad number for one, one attack. Uh, quickly, Professor, to you, bigger picture on just the message that this use of this tremendous bomb uh, is sending to, to the rest of the world. I had a, a very bright, you know, North Korea expert on yesterday saying this absolutely sends a message, say, to Kim Jong Un as we're looking ahead to this weekend in, in that in that country. Do you think it sends a larger message? The president says it doesn't make any difference. Do you think it does? Well, I mean, just to step back for a second and talk about uh, where the buck stops. The buck always stops with the president. And if the president gives his commanders leeway to launch a strike, then it's the president resp president's responsibility when they make the decisions with that latitude. Um, with respect to North Korea, it's really hard to say. This is not the kind of weapon you would want to use in the North Korean environment. You have to push this weapon out of the back of a cargo plane. And you can't fly those kinds of cargo planes over North Korea, and you can't fly them over Iran. Now, this may be an indication that the president is willing to use larger and more powerful ordnance, and we may be hoping that the North Koreans and the Iranians and the Chinese and the Russians will be picking up on that kind of message. Um, but it's really hard to say how they're going to think about how to respond to this, um, especially when they can think to themselves, if this plane appeared in our territory, we could shoot it down. They're dropping it on people who are effectively defenseless against this kind of weapon, and we aren't defenseless. So they get a vote in what kind of message that they hear from this kind of strike. Okay, Robert Farley at the University of Kentucky, thank you for your time. Uh, General Tata, as always, uh, a privilege to talk to you. Thank you, gentlemen, very much.